Hi everyone, I'm Uncle Karen. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna do a little bit of mind reading. So if you're watching this video, you're in either one of three categories. One, you're a high school senior and you're about to apply for colleges and trying to figure out what major you want to study. Two, you recently started college and you're kind of second guessing yourself about whether or not you're studying something that you really like. Or three, you're about to graduate or you've just recently graduated and you're still unsure about what exactly you should do in life that makes you happy. So in this video, I'm gonna do what I always do and give you guys some unwarranted advice about finding your purpose in your late teens slash early 20s when things like college majors and getting your first jobs can cause some unnecessary stress. If you guys are into unwarranted advice and other fun stuff, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it'll help me out a lot and then come join the family and subscribe. I want to share with you guys all of my life experiences and all the things I've learned so that we can all grow together and live our best life. <laughs> okay, without further ado, let's get started. So first, let's talk about how to find what you enjoy doing. The first thing that you should not do is take a BuzzFeed quiz because unfortunately, I don't think your favorite fall Starbucks drink correlates with what you want to do in life. The thing is, I think a lot of people, me included, think that there is a clear-cut answer to this question. Like there is this one thing that you're gonna enjoy for the rest of your life and so finding what that one thing is is like so vital for us because it'll just it's like a key that'll unlock the door to a life full of happiness but there's this article that i read by mark manson he's the author of this famous book called the subtle art of not giving up but this article is slightly less derogatory called Screw Finding Your Passion. I'll link it down in the description box below. And he said, which was kind of a light bulb moment for me, is that if you have to look for what you're passionate about, then you're probably not passionate about it at all. The very nature of us humans is to pursue things and activities that make us happy. So honestly, we've been doing what we enjoy all of our lives. We already know what we enjoy doing because it's like it's already ingrained in us. But as we get older and we start to quote unquote adult and we start to apply to colleges and we start applying to jobs and we have to start figuring out what on earth we should do with our lives on this planet, the question no longer becomes what is my passion but rather what are my priorities. And so that leads into my second topic, which is what you enjoy doing versus what your priorities are. When I was in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to study. Well, just kidding. Yes, I did, but my parents didn't approve any of them. I wanted to be a graphic designer because I loved drawing when I was a kid. I loved creating things. And then I also wanted to get into publishing and journalism because I loved reading and writing. And then I dabbled in coding after joining a Girls Who Code club in my high school. And I didn't like love it, but I tolerated it. And while I love drawing and reading a lot more than programming, ultimately I decided to apply as a computer science major. Because back then, as a high school senior, my priority was not to like my major, it was to be safe, it was to pick what I thought would give me the most stable future, and honestly, it was kind of for clout. As a senior in high school, you don't really think straight. You're not the brightest in your life. Low key, I went in as a computer science major because saying that you're gonna study CS at UC Berkeley is kind of a really big thing, which is so dumb. And these were my priorities because growing up in the Silicon Valley, computer science was a super common major, which made me fit in among my friends. My dad majored in CS, so it definitely had the parents' stamp of approval, and it made a decent amount of money, which meant I would be financially stable. But I stuck with it for an entire semester before switching out into cognitive science. Well, why did I do that? because my priorities changed. I didn't care anymore about fitting in among my friends because I had new friends who majored in all sorts of other things. I grew up and while I still care about my parents' approval, I learned that they just want what's best for me, just like how I also want what's best for myself. And I realized that there's a million different ways to make a decent amount of money other than slaving away at code, which really wasn't my thing. In fact, I learned that working with people and learning about people are my thing. But the key is, is that I wouldn't have known that had I not started with computer science in the first place. Priorities can change, and I think I said this in my 
previous video somewhere, but figuring out what you don't want to do is just as productive as figuring out what you do want to do. And I think this fact continues on even beyond your college years. I mean, I just graduated college and I'm still not 100% sure of what exactly it is that I want to do with my life. Similar to your passions, I think there is this misconception that everyone needs to have like this dream job, like this dream aspiration that they should continue to climb up the career ladder for because there is just one goal that you need to achieve and it's like vital that we should know what that is so we can continue to have like this sense of direction in our lives and eventually once we attain our goal we'll become successful therefore we will be happy but as Mark Manson said if you have to look for what you enjoy in life then you're not gonna enjoy anything I think there's a purpose in every single experience that you have. You learn something about yourself each time you try about whether or not it's something that you enjoy. And each time that you do, your priorities will change. And if priorities can change, then what you pursue in life can also change. So if that's true, comes the big question, do we even have a life purpose? Whoa, Karen, okay, that is way too abstract. Let's take it down a little bit. If you're watching this and you guys are around my age, the question surrounding that is probably then, does it matter what my college major is? Does it really matter what I study in college? In my opinion, in the long run, not really, especially if you're trying to look for a job straight after you graduate from college. What I will say is that your major might matter for probably the first few years after college because, you know, it might be a teeny difficult to become a software engineer after you've taken nothing but English lit classes for your four years in undergrad. And even then, it's not impossible, right? Because you can just finish up your degree and then maybe enroll in a boot camp, learn a language, volunteer, intern, and then you can pretty much be a software for engineer too in a couple of years. For me, I was a cognitive science major and I landed a consulting job right after college. They switched my role into engineering because of COVID, which is even more perplexing in my opinion, but consulting was my original role. And if you think about it, cognitive science and consulting don't really go together, but I was part of a tech consulting organization for four semesters when I was in college and ultimately the work that we did with clients in those organizations were the things that I put in my resume, which is ultimately what employers see. I never really talked about anything that I learned in my CogSci major classes. I pretty much talked about all of the experiences that I had in my tech consulting org and I used the interpersonal skills that I learned from networking opportunities in school. I definitely think that what's more more important is the opportunities that you pursue and the network that you build because ultimately that's where you get the real world experiences that one give you a taste of the full-time job so you know if you really like it or not and two you can put on your resume which employers like to see and then for all you seasoned college students out there the more relevant question is does your first job matter I've only been at my first postgrad job for a couple of months now so I am just learning about this just as much as you guys but just to set the background about why this question is pretty much relevant to me. Like I said before, my role got switched because of COVID, so I was definitely not looking for a role like this when I first graduated. I was into business, consulting, marketing. I was into that types of roles, and then when they funneled me into this role, trust me, in my head, the first thing that came to mind was like, this is not what I've dreamed about doing. I've had many conversations about this with my friends because we're all like living in this generation where it's super, super competitive and people are vying for the same position. For example, everyone I know and their friends are all trying to be associate consultants or associate product managers or associate product marketing managers or investment bankers. And at the same time, we're living in this pandemic where the job market has seen better days let me tell you. But what's been apparent to me so far is that one, I don't know crap about anything, and two, good managers are more important than you think. Let me explain. I realized that a lot of what you do in jobs after graduation has very little to do with the things that you get tested on in school. Either way, your first job is going to be an insane learning opportunity for you because, you know, you haven't really been exposed to it when you were at school. No matter if it's a role that you've dreamed about landing or not, there's always an opportunity to learn in every single role. This is gonna be true no matter if it's a job that you've dreamed about landing or not because in reality, we're all just newly fresh grads who have 
very limited experience about taking our textbook skills into the real world. Therefore, that is why I say good managers are important. They're the ones who will ultimately support internal mobility, meaning your growth within a company, and ultimately they're the ones who will guide you towards a career that you want. Which is also something that I don't think we're expected to know yet as a fresh grad because we haven't really been working for that long. So TLDR, to answer the question, in my opinion, I don't really think so. I honestly think that we're still carving out our resume this early in the game and given the very many years that we have left to work until good old retirement, I think it's pretty unlikely that the job that you have now will determine what you will be doing in the next 10 years. So now that we answered those two questions, going back to our life purpose. Do we have one then? Is there a single monumentous moment in our lives where we can say, yes, this is what I am meant to do and I am happy? I don't know if I can answer that question because truly, I really don't know. But what I do believe is that we shouldn't busy ourselves trying to find it, we should just do it. Mark Manson said in another article that I will also link down below, he said this really amazing quote, here's the truth, we exist on this earth for some undetermined period of time. During that time, we do things. Some of these things are important, some of them are unimportant. And those important things give our lives meaning and happiness. The unimportant ones basically just kill time. So when people say, what should I do with my life? Or what is my life purpose? What they're actually asking is, what can I do with my time that is important? What can I do with my time that is important? And I think the only way to figure that out is by getting up and actually doing it instead of just contemplating it. I firmly believe that everything that happens to us now at least has a purpose. Small tiny purposes, but they ultimately teach us more about who we are and who we want to be. So to round it all off, what I intended this video to be is to just give you guys some sense of comfort. Having been a person who have just gone through the college application process a few years ago and just graduated and just started my first job, I've gained a little bit of perspective about how big and open the world is because I certainly didn't think that way a few years ago. I thought that whatever major I was going to choose, what job I was going to get, they're all ultimately going to dictate what my future will look like in 10 years time. That's really not the case. Let me tell you, once you graduate, your whole world will like open up so much to the point that it's low-key kind of overwhelming. <laughs> so in a larger scale, what I'm trying to say is stop worrying so much because in the end, it's not really gonna matter. Okay, and that is all for this video. I hope whoever is watching out there that you guys are feeling a little bit more comforted about the stressful, tumultuous time in your lives. If you guys have any questions, as always, feel free to comment down below or DM me on Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Your entire future- oh my gosh, my foot just fell asleep. Ow! I can't move my legs. This is what making videos are like, guys. Ow, this hurts. Okay, bye. Bye.